being, you know, a kind of an abject thing. It's oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a perfect <coughs> abject thing. Yeah. Really. I mean, uh, well, look, when I was studying at Sydney College of the Arts, I was really interested in uh, um, Jungian, um, Jungian psychology, the way of being in the world through Jungian eyes. I was never really interested in Freud. Um, although Jung studied th from Freud and, and stuff, uh, I never found Freud my sort of guy. Jung was more soft and I liked him more. So uh, I sort of, by being interested in that area, you can't not but be sort of directed into the idea of fetish objects and, and um, how we are in the world. And, and also being a migrant in Australia, I was because I didn't have that experience of language, I had the experience of, you know, uh, watching. And um, so I was really interested in how people are in the world by their physical being and their spiritual presence. And here it's just perfect. It's, it represents the person's DNA, their, their health, their personal stories, their their psyche, their everything. I mean, sometimes you touch some hair, like people would give me hair, and I'd get a buzz from it. And I know it sounds bizarre, but it is actually true. And there's only been one hair that I've been given that I couldn't work with. Mm. And I had to take it back to the person and ask about their life. But in general, you really are connected very deeply to that individual person. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. So it was that... Uh, um, that connection. So when you're weaving all the people's hair together, you actually, it's like that, you know, the uh, Shakespearean thing where the three witches are making that, s you know, spell, but... In Macbeth. In Macbeth. Yeah. But this isn't, this is more that the people are actually making that sort of spell themselves mm. by being part of it and being fully aware that their gift of their hair that goes into the hair ribbon, they know exactly what they're doing. It's not taken from them, it's not stolen from them or anything. So they make that story. And you actually weave this together in the exhibition space too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, it's evolving. So I started, um, the first time I ever wove hair was in 1994 mm -hmm. and it was originally going to be part of my graduation for my masters, but I did everything else. So I got stuck with feathers and blood and all sorts of things like that. So uh, the hair was finished, the first hair cloth was finished after I graduated with my masters, and that was six meters by one meter. And that was from uh, people that were mostly friends that weren't necessarily strangers. I mean, you know, no, they were quite connected to me through other people or very dear friends of mine and all local. Whilst this one, this is where people, this one's going, I'm working narrower, so it's a ribbon. It's 20 centimetres wide. It's, this is one of them. Um, and, um, and the people that are gifting their hair are actually they can be complete strangers. Mm. So this is one of the lengths. So I keep going and keep weaving and weaving till I run out, because the loom can only take up to eight meters. Yeah. So, so this is it. This is um, the first one I made. And I'll be joining them together. So it's all there's there's over eight hundred people in there. Oh my god. Yeah. And I've collected all the names. Right, you've even got a bit of green in there. Oh, there's green, purple, purple <laughs> blue. We've got oh a few God. punks, a few. Uh, yeah. 
Wow. And so it started on a small wooden loom. But it is, it is, it is straight, because it does actually feel, I mean, it's, it's almost like I don't want to touch it because it yeah. feels like it's really, um, it's, it's something Especially. really intimate about, you know, people's hair, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's very intimate. And yet they're allowing you, by gifting yeah. it, they're actually permitting you to become intimate with them. With yeah, that, yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I'm, it's That's very incredible. interesting. I love it. I l and the smell of it as well. It's it's actually it's it's yeah. quite strong, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's very human. Yeah. 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 Wow. And you know, it's but by, by doing this, what's interesting about yeah. it is that it's also a uh, I've dis uh, by the conversations and the shared stories and things yeah. like that, it also teaches me about class, yeah. social standing, mm. Mm. culture, different yeah. cultures, not so much genders because women and men um, are quite happy to participate in it. I mean, majority of people at Geraldton when I did the performance there were men. Yeah. And they were excited that they would be becoming immortalized. And actually that's a really big thing for a lot of the people. Yeah. That they become remembered. Yeah. Um But it's also interesting that, you know, I've had I've had artists say to me, Oh, but that's really culturally insensitive and I said, No, I can understand you saying it's personally insensitive for some mm. but culturally in every culture in the world, every culture, hair has got a huge, sig it signifies huge power and intimacy. Yeah. So, um, yeah, different people will take it wherever they want to. And there have been people that were completely uh, unprepared to be part of this project. And there was one man in particular that I'll never forget. He was so angry about this because... Really? Yeah, he felt that it linked to um, uh, um, the Holocaust. Yeah, I can... I can yeah. You because know, he really asked for to see the bales yep. of hair. That, yeah, you know. but, but yeah. I said to him, you know, the difference is... Um, and there's... Anyway, the difference is, is that when you steal something or take something away from someone, that's a completely different energy. But when somebody wants to actually partake in something greater than that and connect with others, it's a completely different journey and it breaks that sinister history yeah. away and doesn't give it that power anymore. That's true because there's a, I, I think to interpret it that way is to see it here as only ever having those connotations. Yeah, you know, yeah. In, in some ways you kind of, as a material, within yeah. actually kind of rehabilitating it is something yeah. quite positive. Well, people have, you know, pe people have used hair. I mean, I, I had necklaces from um, up north um, um, that were given to me when I was traveling up north by the local community there that made it out of hair. The, and then they put those red seats over it. Mm. Um, that was one way of working with hair, you know, I mean, uh, Historically, you've you've got like there's in museums they've got um, shamans sticks with hair. Um, people carry their lockets with their loved ones hair. Yeah. You know, I just think that there's meaning in it. Yeah. And and I think that, that SCA was hugely influential on where how I'm working because having John Lethbridge, who who was into the Jungian stuff. Yeah. Um, because it made such an impact on me, um, and that's why I'm working with this medium, because it's just so... It, look, it's, it's got... The, beaut the beauty of hair is it's got the negative and the positive in it. It's got the sinister nature of it, and it's got the power aspect of it, the positive power. So, and that's what I like playing with. I don't like the pretty stuff. Never have, you know? That's not life. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm not interested. And it is funny because, you know, um, it's quite different to physically 
sort of interact with this. Yeah. You know, like when I was holding it then, you know, it, um, it's different to looking at it. Yeah. I mean, there is a kind of a, you yeah. know, like I said, it's difficult. It's almost yeah. difficult to hold because it is yeah. such an intimate thing. Yeah. And, you know, normally you wouldn't feel someone's hair. And, yeah. Unless you kind it's of, intimate. You know. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, in the past, you know, in the Christian you know, monks, yeah. they used to, they used to, you know, hair shirts, yeah, yeah. a form of torture. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, that'd be a form of torture. <laughs> I mean, if I was a monk, I'd be going, yeah, bring it on. You know, like, what? because they believed that hair carried the spirit yeah. of that person and that they could wish you wrong. Mm. Um, but the, because the people are donating their hair for this, there's no wrong. There's just different experiences, different stories. They're positive and negative. Everybody's got that, but there's no. I don't. I don't think there's the wrong energy in that at all. So, do you think there's a kind of a uh, like a social practice element to your work as well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, I, I, it always has been. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why, but I like. I think. Because my parents have always been very political and very left of field, mm. um, and being refugees, they saw life differently and they experienced different things. So they made us aware of different ways of being in the world, and that you know everybody's you know valuable and everybody's in, um, different but the same. So politically, I was brought up with politics. You know, they always discuss politics at home. It wasn't yeah. ever just small talk. It was always big stuff. And so that influenced me hugely. And also being different, being living in a country that always saw you as the other, the, 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 the you know, sometimes dangerous because they didn't understand you. So you were too loud, too weird, too dangerous, all of that sort of mm. stuff. And so that made me interested in... Um, how we are in the world. I'm not, I've never been interested in, you know, some of my friends are fantastic artists who are interested in architecture, just architecture and colour. I'm like, whatever. I, I just never, it, it fascinates me, but it's not the path that I'm interested in. I'm more interested in that social aspect of exploration. Mm. Yeah. How do you see um, your work? So, let me ask this differently. Um, the work that you've got in the SPAN exhibition at the Fremantle Art Centre, tell me a bit about what work you're doing there and um, how you see it then relating to, the, you know, to, to Rick's large curatorial idea. I'm, uh, so what I've pr proposed to do is just continue doing the weaving um, involve the community in a way where they can donate here if they wish, but I'm actually not. Um, it's not a community project as much. It's more of a um, performance in a gallery. So I'm just weaving, not really talking. I'm just weaving, weaving, continuously weaving, taking the hair, but I'm wiring up the loom. So I'm, I've got a metal loom now, oh. and I've always been... I'm, I'm not a wood girl. I've never... Because wood is so earthy it's quiet i'm more um, I'm, i like metal that's why i used to do welding at city mm. college um mm -hmm. so i've got a metal loom and every time you t pull it it makes a sound it clicks so i'm going to wire it up to pick up the sound so we're looking at the performance of the the symbolic spiritual performance of hair um, bringing it all together, all different people together, but recording it through sound as well. Yeah. And so the action is recorded through sound. And I'm sort of excited about that. I don't know where that will go, but I'm hoping in the future that we can actually map it um, on a scale. So every time it makes a sound to see where that goes and then create that story as well. Um, and mapping that. So this will be like the landscape of weaving or the act of weaving and are you starting um, a new yes a new it'll be completely well because this each each loom so i've got 
one loom there, I've got the, the traveling loom in the box here, yeah. and then uh, I've got the metal loom. So each loom can take up to 8, 12 meters of length, and depends how tightly you weave it. From 12 meters, you can end up with just 8. Mm. Um, so, um, so I keep working on each loom till I finish, then I take it off. And then I'll weave those each la each piece back into itself, so it the half a kilometer hair ribbon will actually be just one leg. <laughs> but you know, yeah, it was one of those things. Like, oh yeah, I can do it. And I did my maths nine nine meters a week for two years. Yeah, sure. How, how, what are you up to now? I've got under fifty meters. Right. But because this year, so I started it in uh, late last year. Mm. It's only been 50 meters because I've been working on the show for uh, gallery at South Australia yeah. I've had a few shows since so now that I will just concentrate on the weaving now mm. and it's pretty easy I mean I can I can do three meters a day if I you know concentrate because it's only this wide you know that the the hair cloth that I did that was one meter wide even though it took two years to do when I worked on it every day, I finished it really quickly. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not hard to do. Tell me a little bit about that process of, because I imagine that it's a quite repetitive sort of process. So where do you go in your headspace? When you're ah, moving? see, that's the thing. Repetition makes you go into this fabulous, it's like meditation or yoga. It makes you really relax and it, you, you go through a lot of transformative moments of, you know, you think the day through, you think your experiences through, you think through some things that come to mind. It is very um, healing, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to deal with the different personalities of the hair. So all of that comes in. And sometimes you might not be thinking anything at all, and suddenly the hair that you touch will transport you somewhere else. And then the beauty of it is, then you ask the person about their story and sometimes that's where you went. I know it's weird, but it's true, mm. you know? And so, it, yeah, I, I'm sort of, it's an experiment for me at the moment. It's only at the beginning, but it really does take you different places and your own. There you go. Mm. So these are these oh, are just right. from Sydney. Yeah. These are all the different people. Um, and that's just from Sydney. And yeah. then, um, and I think, oh no, this is this is the new book. No. Um, and so what I do is I'll then put the names in my computer. Yeah. Cool. Then I'll have them all printed in a book. Um, but the original books will be also kept. Um, but I've counted, last time I counted, it was over 3,000. Mm. Mm. How, do, how do they connect? Uh, how do they connect to you? How do they know that? Um, Is it sort of word it's, of mouth? It's word of mouth and it's yeah. advertised at every different performance that I do. So when I go and do a residency, the gallery advertises it. Yeah. Um, or I'll just... Um, uh, I'll be traveling and I'll have the loom in my car like when I did the Geraldton performance I was coming back down to Perth and I went oh so I know some people that live on the coast some of the men the old fishermen that live in the shack so I'll just drive in there and you know they'll there's always someone there and I'll just take out the loom and they're really interested so they then they donate hair then they contact their family then they contact their friends and all that and then people it's yeah it's like a ball that starts rolling in the mm. snow and it becomes ben Hur and yeah it's bigger than i expected really it, it's become huge and i don't know how i'm what i'm going to do when i finish i was good that was going to be my, oh <laughs> my, my question god. actually oh yeah. my god look i don't know you know originally when i first made the hair cloth that was um the six meter one by one meter Originally, I made it to make a dress out of it, yeah. a ball gown, and I couldn't bring myself to cut it. Yeah. I just couldn't. Um, and so this one, I will join together instead of, like, the six meter one, I was going to cut, 
then I couldn't. This one, I'm going to join all the different pieces yeah. together. And I think I'm going to roll it all up. And, you know, half a kilometre won't be much. It will be about this diameter. Mm. Not much. Um, as, a, as a roll. As a roll. Yeah. And exhibit it that way, mm. I think. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, just trying to do the maths now, which my math is never any good, but 3,000, so you're probably talking about 30,000. I'm... I, Thereabouts. Yeah. The, the, look, I've got... You want to see something? I'll show sure, you something. Yeah. This, this has arrived last week. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. That that'd be that'd be about three hundred. Yeah. And where's that where's this one from? Well, this is very different. This is oh, this is not very good, very dry. Um this is a different project, but I'm working with sustainable um, salons yeah. uh, it's a company that i met just a few weeks ago in sydney yeah and what they're doing is they uh they collect hair from all over australia from donations to make wigs for women for with cancer or children yeah. um but they can only work with certain length. So they've got, you know, you know, we were talking about going to Auschwitz and there's mountains of hair there. Yeah. It, that's, you go to their factory and there's mountains of hair there. Mm. Um, but what they're using the hair for, like this is stuff they can't use, but I can. Yeah. But, so we're doing a project. It's not for the hair weaving. It's completely different. But, um, what you can do when there's an oil slick in the ocean the best material to pick up that oil slick is human hair wow so they like that so we create the crap yeah and we take it back that's yeah. what i love yeah. so hair is the best material so we're working together to make sculptures rather than just sort of um you know, we you know sort of sausage shapes objects that you s put in the water and collect the oil, making it sculptural and and beautiful and interesting and making people more aware of the damage that we do to the environment. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Will you do you think when you finish the the five hundred meters? that you'll continue working with hair is this now? Mm, I don't think so. Yeah. I, I actually don't cause, because I, I sort of, I will always work with hair, like I always work with steel, like I always work yeah. with feathers or whatever, but not at this, this crazy level. No, 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 I think I'll be over hair. You may, you may still get people sending it to you anyway. I can still work with it, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just a medium. I think, I think what I want to say will be finished and then I'll move on to something else.